Your chances of being found not guilty depend entirely on one person, you. You know the nasty tasting tablet your mummy gives you? Is this one of them? This is turning into a disaster. We have grounds for appeal. You think we're gonna lose? there all alone. She was obviously at risk. Sheila, you know the proper procedure. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but it looked to me like serious physical and psychological abuse. I had to get her away. Then you should have called the child protection team and let them involve social services, not go off at half cock like some probationer. We tried social services. They had no record of Ronnie being at risk and they couldn't come out this afternoon. Look, I know I was wrong, but I was desperate. I had to get the child to a place of safety as soon as possible. You still should have caught the mother first. But the child was at risk from the mother. Right. We've left me no choice. I shall have to call Mrs Norton, tell her where her daughter is, and then arrange for a search of the house. Yes, Mum. Oi! Not you, you're staying here. Just get me some concrete evidence by the end of the day, understood? Mum. Grab a gram. Yeah, according to Josh Green, it's some sort of uh, blue chip delivery company. Designer drugs straight to your door. What makes you so sure that your son's dealing again? Well, after they found the coke on the witness's scooter, Terry persuaded her to name the top man, and she came up with Benjamin's name. I've got Terry and Samantha tracing the supply link. Well, you know, it could be someone with a grudge against Benjamin. <laughs> That's a nice try, Neil. But it wasn't that long ago when Benjamin was sitting in a pub with Ashley Fordham, and £3,000 worth of cocaine. Yeah, well, that's my point. We couldn't prove that Benjamin was involved, and that would have got a few people's backs up, particularly Ashley Fordham. Now, the point is, he swore to me that he was through with drugs, and I took two weeks off to help him through it. And now this. Look, Gov, I understand how you feel, but, um, we haven't got any facts yet. Let's wait to see what Samantha and Terry come up with, and we'll go from there. Ah, oh, come on, this is a waste of time, isn't it? Mm. If this is one of Josh Green's regular coat drop-offs, no one's going to step up now that she's been nicked, are they? Well, I agree. But if this grabber gram is as professional as she says, they won't want to start losing clients, will they? No, but if Benjamin Meadows is in charge, he's not going to show his face. He's not that stupid, is he? Well, let's hope for Jack Meadows' sake he's not stupid enough to start dealing in the first place. Sergeant Smith has got Leela covering the front desk for me. Thanks, JT. Are you sure you don't mind looking after her? Of course not. It's a pleasure. Look, I've been thinking, have you considered approaching a GP? There's no point. Doctor-patient confidentiality. Listen, I've drawn up a list of private hospitals, so at least I'll be able to tell us whether she's a registered patient or not. OK, well, we better get on with it then. I'll see you later, darling. Mrs Norton. Hello, I'm Sergeant Smith. Your inspector called to say that one of your officers brought my little girl in. That's right. I believe that your daughter was left alone in the garden. <laughs> yeah? How did Papa for five minutes? But she's only nine years old. Yes. And I'm a single parent. You know, sometimes it's unavoidable. She's always fine. Look, can someone tell me what's going on? Certainly. She was talking there. <laughs> Mrs Norton. There are some concerns about Ronnie's welfare. Concerns? What do you mean? What I understand is you've been giving your daughter some non-prescription drugs. Now listen, I didn't come here to answer your questions. I came to see Inspector Gold and to collect my daughter. So if you could just let her know I'm here. Okay. So you've no one registered under the name of Veronica Norton? Or Ronnie Norton? Okay, thank you. I hate to say this, but I did say leave this to social services. Inspector Gold's given me till the end of today to come up with something. Look, I'll do the hospitals. Why don't you try the cancer charities? See if Kathleen's approached Diana. Okay. Have you tried the Wish Factory? If Kathleen is collecting for a holiday, chances are she's approached them for a contribution. Thanks. I'll do it now. Here we go. Got some movement. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's Sasha Spencer. She's Ashley Fordham's ex-girlfriend. Ex? Yeah, she used to live with him, then she moved out once we nicked him for possession of coke. As far as we were concerned, she wasn't involved. 
What's she doing here then? Visiting an alleged grab a gram customer? I don't know. Right, let's find out what else she knows. Thanks very much. Kathleen contacted the Wish Factory two months ago. They logged her application for help and she changed her mind. How come? The charity needed a consultant's letter to confirm Ronnie's condition. She refused. You don't say. I don't mean to be boring, but this is far from evidence. It's evidence of dishonesty. Is it? What if Kathleen says that it was pride that made her change her mind? Or that she couldn't stand the red tape and admin? Raman is right. We still need to prove that Ronnie hasn't got cancer. Well, if you can think of anything, now would be a good time. Better hope that the house search turns something up. Mrs. Norton, I realise these questions might be quite difficult, but you must appreciate that we have a job to do. I just don't believe this. So you're actually accusing me of pretending my daughter has cancer. Now, why would you even think that? Please sit down. Did you give Ronnie Dalmoxil? She's in pain, for heaven's sake. It helps her to sleep. But, I mean, come on, that's not illegal. It just means we both get the rest we need. But you told PC Murphy that you gave her those particular tablets to settle her stomach. Oh, she takes so many tablets. I get confused with what's what. What other medication is she on? Methotrexin. Now, about her shaved head, you admit that you did that? If you had seen how she looked before, all these little bald patches, anything was better than that. You also told PC Murphy that Ronnie is being treated at the Royal Victoria, is that right? Well, initially, yeah. But they probably won't have any record. Well, I didn't like the consultant, so we decided to go private instead. Oh, that must be expensive. People have been very generous. Now, we could settle this really quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, if you give permission for Ronnie to be examined by the forensic medical examiner, just to make sure that she really is ill, then you can take her home. Absolutely not. Do you not think my daughter goes through enough medical examinations? Now, why on earth would I want to subject her to another unnecessary one? Okay, okay. Well, let's call her own doctor. Look, now I've already told you, this is a mistake. Now, I insist that you let me take Ronnie home at once. Otherwise, I'll be speaking to my solicitor. Boys, I... You all right, mate? Wasn't much happening down there, Nick, so I thought I'd pop my head in. How's it going? Not great. Poor car just made her look like a right psycho. She's convinced she's going to prison. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, you're not allowed to come Look, in here. Hold on, I have to go in. I'm here to see British justice. It's me right. I'm sorry, sir. You still can't come in here. Wait, that's enough. Off you go. You heard me. Off you go, or I'll nick you. She seems to have perked up, isn't it? Obviously, the diamoxes were enough. Looks like her appetite's coming back, too. So, how's it going? Well, she's beaten me twice already. That's because you're so slow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Thanks, JT. I just need to have a word with Ronnie, OK? OK, no worries. I'll see you again, sweetheart. When's Mummy coming? She'll be here soon, darling. But first, I need to ask you some more about the hospital where you had your treatment. Can you remember what it's called? I told you I'm always asleep. Mum says it's best, or I might get scared. Is there something wrong? It's my plaster. It's really itchy. I'm not surprised. You really need a new one. I was supposed to have treatment today. To put a chain stick. You too. Word. Okay, I'll be sick, okay? The house search was a complete waste of time, and now Mrs. Norton is threatening to take legal action unless she can take Ronnie home immediately. But, Mum, we need more time. I'm sorry. Mrs. Norton will not agree to the FME giving her examination. I have no choice. Mum, wait. Why don't I change that nasty old plaster and give you a nice new one before you go? Okay. It covers the port where Ronnie has her chemotherapy. I tell I used to be a nurse. Okay, hold nice and still for me, sweetheart, yeah? Okay, you ready? Hold still for me. Is this enough evidence? And so, 
after Lee Thomas had escaped from your custody, what did you do? I immediately gave chase on foot. PC Stamp pursued Lee's cousin in the area car. Did you catch up with Mr. Thomas? Eventually. He was hiding behind some wheelie bins at the back of Slate Lane. Did you say anything to him at this point? Yes, sir. I got out my handcuffs and I said, you haven't done yourself any favours, come on. What did you mean by that? That he should give himself up. What happened then? At first, he came towards me with his hands out and then he grabbed my arm and he pulled me forwards and that's when I lost my balance and he got me in a kind of chokehold. Can you describe the hold? Where were you in relation to Mr. Thomas? As I said, I was off balance and he was above and behind me. His right arm was round my neck and his left was locking it on tighter, like this. What was your reaction to being seized like this? I shouted at him to stop, but he wouldn't. And I couldn't shake him off, and he was squeezing tighter and tighter. And so, what did you do next? I managed to rack my asp open, and I tried to hit his legs, but I couldn't reach. So, that's when I went like this. You're indicating that you aimed a blow towards the victim's head, is that correct? Yes, sir. Were there any other areas of the victim's body you could reach? I did try. But the angle was all wrong. I didn't want to hurt him, but I was desperate. There was nothing else I could do. P.C. Hemingway, it's been suggested by my learned friend that you may have had another motive for hitting Lee Thomas that day. Namely, that you were still angry over the alleged theft of flowers from Shirley Moss's grave and that you held Lee Thomas responsible. What do you say to that? It's not true. I was angry about what he'd done, but I wanted justice, not revenge. I have no further questions, my lord. Nice address. Mm, it's a gravel ground customer profile. Follow her, see which flat she's visiting. Sarge. criminal deception and child abuse. Now, I've already warned your inspector that I will be taking this matter further. Kathleen, how long have you been pretending that Ronnie has cancer? Pretending? What, you actually think I'm making all of this up? Isn't that why I gave her dimoxyl? To make her look sick? That is a lie. I would never hurt my little girl. Mrs Norton, nobody's saying that you don't care for Ronnie. Well, then exactly what are you saying? Obviously, you've been through a great deal. It's tough being a single mum. She's got acute lymphoblastic leukaemia. She needs constant care. Kathleen, which hospital is Ronnie being treated at? No, I don't have to tell you that. Were you always present at Ronnie's chemotherapy sessions? Yes. I'm her mother. I stay with her and I hold her hand. What do you expect? Which means that you watch them put medicine into her port. Yes. Yes, I've already told you that. Except that it's not true, is it, Kathleen? Because Ronnie doesn't have a port, does she? Look, this is an offcut of tube that we found underneath the plaster. Now, you put it there to make it look like Ronnie had a port. The truth of the matter is, Ronnie doesn't have leukemia at all, does she? Gov. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Gov, we sighted Sasha Spencer. Visiting the target premises. We've now followed her. to another location. Sasha Spencer, what's she doing there? What is that new location, sir? It's a private block of flats on Denzel Street, Palm Court. She let herself into flat six. She's got a key. Can you do a voter's register? Yeah, do a bother. Sam, it's Jack here. That's Benjamin's flat. Request instructions, Gov. Stay where you are. Keep up the elbow. But if she comes out, you get back on her, right? Receive, Gov. Benjamin with Ashley Fordham's girlfriend. 
Looks like Josh Green was right. Well, it doesn't actually prove anything, Gov. All we have so far is Sasha visiting an address. Oh, yeah, and letting herself into my son's flat. Do me a favour, Neil. PC Hemingway, how did you feel when the deceased Lee Thomas escaped from your police car? I don't know. Um, surprised. But he was in your custody, wasn't he? Weren't you a little embarrassed to have let him escape? No. Not really. Oh, PC Hemingway, I put it to you that not only were you embarrassed, you were also, to quote PC Stamp, angry that Mr. Thomas had reneged on his earlier promise to help you arrest his cousin. No, ma'am. That you were already angry with Mr. Thomas for the theft of flowers from Shirley Moss's grave. And, having cornered Mr. Thomas with no witnesses present, you are now determined to have your revenge. No. And in a fit of violent temper, you drew your police asp and recklessly struck Lee Thomas a blow on the head, which led to his death. No, that's not true. As I've said, I was attacked and I defended myself. So you're saying you don't have a violent temper, is that it? No, not violent. But I have my moments, like anyone. B.C. Hemingway, the court has already heard from Paul Carr how only after a minor difference of opinion you hit him in the face. Was that one of your so-called moments? And that's why you did it. Because you wanted the money. Do you know how hard it is, bringing up a child on your own? Kathleen. You told Ronnie she had cancer, and then you filled her full of diamoxyl until she could barely stand. Don't look so outraged. <laughs> but diamoxyl won't kill a child. I checked the dose, okay? So come on. There's no harm done there. What about the psychological damage? You told your daughter that she was terminally ill. How is she supposed to get over that? And what about me? I never wanted a child in the first place. I got pregnant by accident and my husband convinced me to keep it. Then walked out on us when Ronnie was four months old. And you think that's Ronnie's fault? <sighs> Look, I just wanted to make some money, okay? Like I had before Ronnie came along and, you know, who knows? Maybe take a holiday for the first time in ten years. Do you not see that what you have done is something very, very wrong? There is the fraud at the very least. Making all those people feel good about themselves. Donating money to help a sick child. You know, what's a better feeling than that? You mean you would have kept all the money and gone to Disney World knowing that you deceived all those people? Why not? I mean, I think I've earned it. So, Constable, just to get this clear, you don't deny you hit Paul Carr in the face? No, Mum. Or that you did indeed lose your temper on that occasion? I know I shouldn't have lashed out, but I'd been under a lot of pressure. Why? Because Mr. Carr challenged your authority? No, because he grabbed me and called me something very offensive. Just as Lee Thomas challenged your authority by running away. And in both cases, your immediate knee-jerk reaction was to lose control and hit out. Isn't that so? Look, I only hit him once. The one difference being that when you confronted Mr. Thomas, you had a metal police asp at your disposal. Isn't that true? As I've already said, Lee Thomas was choking me. My hitting Paul Carr was completely different, like one off. Ask anybody who knows me, I'm not a violent person. Please, I'm I'm you, so just leave now or you're under arrest. Look, I'm not as far enough. What's going on? I was just sitting out here waiting to give evidence, and this guy tries to barge in the court with high security hanging off him. Didn't we warn you earlier, Sunshine? What are you trying to do? Stop the trial? No, I told her I just want to watch. We can let go of that. Even go. Now, now, look, the last thing we want to do is nick you and then cart you off to Sunhill, but we will if we have to. It's up to you. Okay, oh, oh, that's it. You are nicked for breach of the peace. She's on the move again. That's interesting. Joss Green used a scooter to deliver for grab grab Right. Get onto uniform, have them pull her over, do a document check and then a vehicle search. But if I'm not radio, that means Mummy lied to me. Why would she do that? Did I do something wrong? No, 
You must never, ever think that. I just don't think your mum is very well. Sheila. Be back in a sec, okay? Our social services got back to you. They found her a foster family. I'm going to drive her over. Meet her caseworker there. Poor love. First we told you of cancer, and then that it's all a big lie, and from your own mother. I can't imagine what's going through her head right now. She's probably in shock. Anyway, social services will ensure that she comes through this all right. Thanks. DC Perkins from Sunnyhill CID. Can you confirm that this is your property, yeah, please, Miss? Whoa! I'm arresting you for possession of a Class A drug with intense supply. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on the court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? But one of the speaks uh, Meadows. Get in the car. Hello, Benjamin. Dad, what are you doing here? You didn't tell me that Sasha Spencer was living here. Yeah, well, um, she needed a place to stay. Why? We just arrested her leaving this flat with six wraps of suspected cocaine. We think she's delivering. What? What, are you telling me you know nothing about it? Well, then, what? Of course I don't. But you haven't been near any drugs. Dad, you and I have spent the last two weeks together. How can you even ask me that? Look, Benjamin, I'm just going to ask you this once. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Because after this, I cannot help you. Dad, trust me, I have no idea what you're talking about. Neil. Dad! This is a mistake. Benjamin Meadows, I'm arresting you on suspicion of conspiracy to supply Class A drugs. Right, come on. I hope you've got a good reason for kicking off in there. I told you, I just wanted to watch the trial. The one with the black police woman. You seem to be down the market picking fruit out of the bins. Look, I'm interested, that's all. Now why would you be interested in the trial of a police officer, exactly? Because I could have helped her. Hey? I could have pulled that bloke off her and he might be still alive. Hang about. Are you saying you actually witnessed the assault take place? That's all the old thing. What do you mean, they arrested him? You only booked him in a minute ago. Mr Bishop claims to be an eyewitness to the incident with Lee Thomas. You know how it is, Sarge. If we question him here, we could all be accused of leading the witness. What we've got to do is get him back to court ASAP in front of solicitor. Then we've got to try and persuade him to make a statement and give evidence. You get to sign that, let's get him out of there. Yep. Cheers, Sammy. Hey, Dad, I told you you won't find anything! You shit out and shut up! You find anything? No. Nothing in the kitchen, the bathroom, or the bedroom. Well, you won't find anything here. Right, let's get him back to Sunil. You still got a lot of explaining to do. Come on, we're running out of time. How long we got? Well, how is in there? That's my turn, and that's it. You're not seriously going to let him give evidence in that state, are you? We have to work fast to go through his proof of evidence. Oh, what are you talking about? Are we going in to watch? Yeah, yeah, only the time, mate. First, you'll be looking down a little chair. Get yourself down to a charity shop, find him a decent shirt, a suit and a pair of shoes. Mum, you are joking. Does his face look like I'm joking? I get going. Oh. PC Harmon, were you with PC Hemingway on the night of the incident with Paul Carr? Yes, sir, I was. Did you witness a confrontation between them in the car park of the Grand Duke Public House? Yes, I did. And what did you see? We both saw Mr. Carr approach a vehicle with his friends and take his keys out. 
I could tell from his demeanour that he had had quite a bit to drink. Did you say anything to Mr Carr at this time? Yes, sir. I think I remember saying something like, you're not going to drive home like that, are you? And how did Mr Carr react? Well, he made a joke of it and suggested that I might like to take him home instead. When I said that wasn't going to happen, he muttered something and continued to put his keys in the car door. What did you conclude from this? That he intended to drive home anyway. What happened next? That's when PC Hemingway took the keys from the car door. She told Paul Carr that it was for his own good and then asked one of his friends to take the keys and drive home instead. Did Mr Carr take her advice well? No, sir. He became quite angry. He made a grab for PC Hemingway's coat when her back was turned and then said to her, Give me the keys, you black bitch. You black bitch? You're sure it was those exact words you heard? Yes, sir. Definitely. P.C. Harmon, in your opinion, had P.C. Hemingway done anything to warrant such abuse? No, sir. In my opinion, she was just protecting him from himself. No more questions for this witness. P.C. Harmon, is it unusual for a police officer to receive abuse and insults in the course of their duties? No, ma'am. To an extent, it's all part of the job. So, you'd agree that being a good police officer involves a great deal of self-control? Yes, I suppose so. More so, say, than for the average citizen. Yes, ma'am. So, PC Harmon, in your opinion, when PC Hemingway hit Paul Carr in the face, do you consider she was exercising the right kind of self-control expected of a police officer? Just answer yes or no. No, ma'am. No more questions, ma'am. Why is it so important that you speak to DCI Meadows? I know his son, and I want to speak to someone I can trust. What's your relationship with Benjamin Meadows? He's a good friend. Why? In the same way as Ashley Fordham. What are you suggesting? Well, I'm suggesting that after Ashley Fordham was arrested, somebody had to run the operation. Someone with experience in running a business. I know nothing about running a business. Oh, no, I know. But Benjamin does. So, where were you heading when our officers arrested you? I was going to visit a friend. Not just one friend, though, Sasha. According to your organiser, you had six addresses lined up for today. Oh, come on, Sasha. Six addresses and six grams of cocaine. Say what you like. Anything found on that bike was for personal use, and Benjamin had nothing to do with it. Look, I'd like to help you, but I can't, OK? Why not? Because I can't face it, that's why. I can't stand up there in front of all those people, thinking I'm looking at me. But why not? You're just as good as any of them. It's not the point. They've all got homes and, and jobs. They're real people. Not like me. Forget about everybody else. This isn't about them, it's about you and what you believe in. You told us earlier, Andrew, that you could have helped our officer and you didn't. It was all over so quick, there was no time to react. I'm not criticising you. I'm just saying that it's not too late. There is still a chance. You can still make a difference. All you've got to do is go in there and tell them exactly what you saw. <sighs> and what were they thinking of me then? All those fine people when they I saw a woman getting choked and I did nothing. Well, maybe the real point is, what will you think about yourself if you don't say something now? Do me a favour. Stop playing the innocent with me. <laughs> Josh Green has named you as Mr Grabagram, the geezer in charge of the company. Josh Green? You do know her then? I don't think I know anyone called Josh. Did you know Sasha was dealing? I suppose there's no point protecting her. So you did know about the delivery service? No, but I had my suspicions. Based on what? <sighs> Late night phone calls, then Sasha disappearing off on her bike. Um, she's been spending an awful lot on clothes lately, and she hasn't even got a job. And she has to pay you rent? No, I didn't charge her a penny. Really? Wow. You're a nice guy. Like I said, after Ashley got arrested, I felt sorry for her and she needed somewhere to stay. And this is how she repairs me. <laughs> Do you seriously expect me to believe that you live with this woman, but you weren't in business with her? Look, you've searched my flat and you found nothing. 
What else do you want me to say? <laughs> yeah. How are we doing? What have you got there? Jacket, trousers, shirt, tie, shoes. About the guess's size, but I think they should fit okay. Listen, I've got to get back to the Nick, but I've just seen Honey and she said Inspector Gold's in the witness box now. Look, Andrew, do you really want to see an innocent person go to prison? Because I don't believe you do. Inspector Gold, how long have you known PC Hemingway? Just over two years. What impression have you formed about her character and the quality of her work? That she is one of the most caring and passionate officers I've ever worked with. And her heart is completely in the job of a very fine officer. And prior to this incident, has she ever received any complaints about her behaviour which were upheld? Not to my knowledge. Thank you, Inspector. I have no further questions. No, no questions, ma'am. My lord, that concludes the case for the defence. <laughs> Apologies, my lord. It seems that, like the Crown, we too have a late witness. If I might request a short adjournment to seek instructions. Yes, very well. How did you pay for the scooter? For the benefit of the tape, DC Perkins has entered the room and has a tape machine to play a recording to Sasha Spencer. I think Sasha might like to hear. I suppose there's no point trying to protect her. So you did know about the deliveries? No, but I had my suspicions. Based on what? <sighs> Late night phone calls, then Sasha disappearing off on her bike. Um, she's buying an awful lot of clothes lately. She doesn't even have a job. But he's lying. This whole thing was his idea. I was working for him. So you're saying that Benjamin Meadows is the man behind Grabagram, is that it? What, do you want me to spell it out? So did he send you to the house on Gunner Street earlier today? Come on, Sasha. We've got the drugs as evidence. You might as well come clean. One of Benjamin's couriers was arrested, Joss Green. The customer was unhappy. I thought I might step in. You thought you'd set up your own little private client list behind his back? Well, why not? He's making enough cash for himself. I'm going to ask you this again. When we arrested you, why did you ask to speak to DCI Meadows? The real reason. After Ashley Fordham was arrested, Benjamin told his friends there was nothing more to worry about, that his dad was on board and that he had all our backs. He told you DCI Meadows is corrupt. Well, they do say like father, like son. Uh, I swear by almighty God that the evidence I shall give it's okay, Mr. Bishop. Just take your time. That the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, Sasha's given us a full statement, Benjamin. She said that the drugs we found were yours and that Grabagram is your operation. What? Is that all you've got to say? Well, what do you expect me to say? She's lying. Why would she do that? You took her in, didn't you? Gave her a place to stay. Even let her share your bed, didn't you? You think she'd be a bit more grateful? You would, wouldn't you? I don't know why. Maybe she's a flake. Or maybe she's just so desperate to beat this charge that she'd say anything. Even put the whole thing on me. What? Like you loaded it on her, you mean? The difference is you found drugs on Sasha. You found nothing on me and you're not going to. I saw her arms flailing and she was making choking noises, but he just kept on squeezing and squeezing like he didn't care. How did you assess the officer's safety at this time? Um, I thought he was going to kill her. But you didn't make any move to help. I wanted to help, but I was scared. 
He was like a madman. I just thought any minute now there'll be more police along. You thought help was at hand? Yes, sir. What happened next? Um, then I saw Officer flick him with that um, metal stick and he just collapsed and lay on the ground. Where precisely did you see the officer strike the victim? First she tried to hit his legs but she couldn't reach so she flicked over her shoulder and his head went back. I presume that's where she hit him. And would you indicate on the plan uh, where you were standing when you saw all this? Um, here in bin cupboard. That's where I'd been dusting. About, what, five metres from where the incident took place? Yeah, I saw it as clear as day. And afterwards, when the other police officers eventually arrived, why didn't you make yourself known to them? As I've already said, sir, I was afraid. And ashamed. Lord, I have no further questions. Mr. Bishop, I can't help wondering why, if you really saw what you claim, you didn't come forward sooner. I suppose I didn't want to get involved. It wasn't until Tony, the policeman told me how important it was. So you're saying the only reason why you're here is because of another police officer's encouragement, is that correct? I suppose so. Did that police officer tell you what you were to say? No, he didn't. But he did give me a cup of tea in this suit to her. Oh. As payment, perhaps, for coming here today and telling a story that would help his friend. Isn't that how it was? No, that's not why I'm here. You're just trying to twist what I say. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Just yes or no. Look, I know what you're thinking. I saw a woman being assaulted and I didn't know how to help her. You're thinking, what kind of a man does that? Mr. Bishop, I think you've answered the question. Well, I'm not proud of that. That's the reason that I'm here. Not because of this cheap suit or a free cup of tea. But because I had to tell the truth. And because you need to know that this police officer did nothing wrong. Lord, that concludes the case for the defence. So she said that he actually used my name and position to protect his drug dealing business. He's obviously a very clever lad. There was no sign of any cash or any drugs at his flat. He's covered his tracks very well. All we can do is charge Sasha and release Benjamin. He's laughing at us. No, he's not Samantha. He's laughing at me. And you can see why. The arresting Ashley Fordham, I thought I was straightening him out. But all I did was clear the field so he could step in. And it looks like he's going to get away with it. What if they don't believe him? All you've got to remember, Yvonne, the longer the jury stays out, the better it looks for you. The jury's reached a verdict. They're on the way back in. <laughs> Just answer yes or no. Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? Yes. On the charge of manslaughter, how do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? <coughs> not guilty. This is finally over. Congratulations, Yvonne. Justice served. But tell me, I don't know what to say. Well, you could say what you're drinking. I always respond well to that. But where's Andrew? Oh. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I should have come forward a little bit sooner. I know what you did was really hard. You did a really brave thing. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Come on, Yvonne, we're waiting for the neck. Take care of yourself, yeah? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, what are you going to do now? I could put you in touch with Shelter. They could help you find a place. Maybe apply for a job if that's what you want. Actually, I was thinking about giving my sister in South End a call. It's been a few years, but I've still got a number. So they what? Have this one on me. I just 
want to say um, thank you to everybody for their support, and um, but especially to Tony, because I think we all know where I'd be sitting now. You hadn't yeah. convinced Bishop to give evidence. Yeah. So, so thank you, everybody. Oh. Thank you. That's uh, quite enough of that. So another round, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 Very generous of you, Tony. That's an opera, I expect the gold's tap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Paul Cracker. Have a cracker. Sheila. You heard about the Vons result? Yeah, it's fantastic. Holly said they're all going into Chinatown tonight to celebrate. Go on. That'll give it a miss. A bit knackered. How did Ronnie take to her foster placement? As you'd expect, a bit anxious. And then as I went to leave, she just clung to me. Awful, awful. What could I do? Don't beat yourself up about it. You did a good job today. I knew. You were the voice of reason. You'd have done the same for me. Say hi to the one for me, yeah? Well, see ya. So how do you feel now that your treatment's over? You know me. Strong as an ox. But how long have you got to wait until you get some results? One month. Until the quick checkup. Right. Three months till D-Day. And who's counting? Mm. We're here for a celebration. We need to talk about my cancer. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Sheila. You all right? Hi, guys. How are you? You look good. Oh, listen, um, how's Ronald? Safe. That's the main thing. I just feel so stupid organising that collection. I'm going to have to apologise everyone and give the money back. No, you won't. There are lots of genuinely sick kids and they could use that money. Hey, look. It's Barton Street's oh! finest. I've never known a Samuel Cotton who could hold his drink. <laughs> you ain't gonna find one in here. <laughs> Manager called us, said it was a bunch of troublemakers terrorising his customers. Oh, yeah. no, you just We're having a little celebration, but don't you worry, it's all under control. Okay, try and keep it down, alright? Yeah, man, have a safe night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, well. Isn't that little grass herself? How's it going, it's Samuel? Got anyone kicked out there yet? Look, I didn't get Carol Watson fired from Barton Street. She did that herself by assaulting the witness. Yeah, but it was you who reported her, and she hasn't worked since. Come. All right, we've made your point. I don't you think it's a good idea if you go? Absolutely, Matt. Just as soon as you've settled the bill. You know what? You've changed my mind. You're drunk and disorderly. I want you all to leave now. <laughs> You're a joke, and a little, you know, it's a party. <laughs> oh, come on, Merv, what are you like, a plunk of the ear or something? <laughs> Manager's made a complaint, so now you're going to have to leave. Unless you want to be arrested. <laughs> Does he know who I am? Yes, ma'am. It's Inspector Gold, isn't it? Yes, Sergeant. So why don't you poodle off and let me handle this? I can't do that, ma'am, I'm afraid. You're off duty now. Mm. And you've been drinking. Quite a bit, by my estimation. <laughs> Now, I suggest that you pay the bill and leave quietly. That way we avoid any embarrassment. Uh, easy, man. Oh! Oh! Sorry, it was a joke. No, it was a joke. It was an accident. <laughs> yeah, we can tell that to the borough commander when he reads my report. <laughs> I think you better leave. Oh. Now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Finish your drinks. Come on. We're getting out of here. Yeah. Oh. Come on, I'll get, I'll get my coat. Oh, oh come on, man. It was an accident, oh, mate. You saw that. It's not going. I've done it, yeah. Yes, yes, I'm sorry about that. Oh, don't worry, it's not your fault. You're surprising up here, Mitz. Here, did you see his face when he spit the gold for a drink over him? <laughs> and the hanky. Anyone you know, fancy going to my club? Come on, club in. <laughs> <laughs> you were bloody lucky you got a result today, you know that? Well, it could have been a lot worse. Especially if I hadn't had Gabriel talking sense to me. Gabriel? Oh. Seriously, he was right there when I needed him. I keep telling him he should push for sergeant. Do me a favour, Sheila. Stop banging on about Gabriel, all right? Smithy, what is your problem with Gabriel? You've never liked him, have you? I mean it. Shut up. But I just don't get you. Even after he risked his life pulling you out of that fire, he still won't give him the time of day. Oh, what, and you think he's the Archangel, is that it? No, but I do think you make a damn good sergeant. What's wrong with that? The day they give three stripes to a rapist is the day I hand mine in. What? You heard. Kerry accused your boyfriend of raping her. How else do you think she was carrying his kid? 
waited this long to release me. You know, well, I'm sorry about that. We got a little bit tied up, you know? Yeah, sure you did. I told you you're wasting your time. We'll be charging Sasha with intent to supply, if that means anything to you. Good. Then perhaps you'll have learned a lesson, like I did. Seems to me the only lesson that you've learned is how to hide behind other people. Look, Dad, how many times have I got to tell you I'm innocent? Come on, let's go. Terry. Yeah? Let me show him out. You sure? I'll have a quick word with him. That way than never. You're really pleased with yourself, aren't you? No, not really. I can think of better ways to spend my evening than sitting in a police cell. Well, you better get used to it. Occupational hazard for a drug dealer. So, how many times have I got to tell you you've got it wrong? You even used my name, didn't you, as a guarantee? Like I was part of it! Personally, I don't see what the big deal is. Five years from now, all drugs are going to be legal anyway. So what is the point? The point is, if someone else had nicked you, I'd be finished in the job. Can't you see that? Dad, I am not going to get nicked. We won't let you down. Okay? And I will not let you down, son. If that means nicking you for your own good, then so be it. Is that a threat? That's not a threat. That's a promise. Next time on The Bill. Benjamin, stop! I need to know what Carrie said about Gabriel raping her. Do you believe it? Dad! Don't walk away from me! Dad!